Now let's talk about how microorganisms grow. Where do they grow and how do they grow? Microorganisms need specific environments to grow and reproduce. Some of them need oxygen to thrive and they are called aerobic microorganisms. For example, many bacteria are aerobic. But here is the twist. Some bacteria can also grow without oxygen and they are called anaerobic organisms or anaerobic bacteria. Like the yeast, yeast doesn't need oxygen to grow. And here is something even more fascinating. Some microorganisms are tough enough to survive in extreme conditions like ocean floor or freezing polar ice. And they have an amazing strategy to survive. When conditions get rough, some microorganisms form a thick protective covering around themselves. And they stop all their life processes. And once things improve, they get rid of the thick protective covering and continue with the life processes. Isn't that amazing? I think so. Microorganisms can be our friends and foes. Let's start with our friends first. Do you know that microorganisms play a huge role in improving the soil fertility? Yes. In the roots of leguminous plants, a special microorganism called rhizobium lives. And what does this rhizobium do in the roots of leguminous plants? They convert nitrogen from the air into something useful that plants can use. This not only boosts soil fertility but also adds protein to the pulses. Now, ever thought of why our pulses are so rich in protein? You should be thanking rhizobium here. So next time you enjoy a ball of dal, give a shout out to this friendly microbe. There is more. Microorganisms are also key players in food production. For example, they are behind the magic of fluffy soft bread. And how does that happen? Well, yeast is added to the dough and through fermentation, it causes the dough to rise and become light and fluffy. We'll get into the science of fermentation in another video. Yeah, and uh, let's not forget the bacteria that transform milk into curd. Curd is a very common food in our everyday meal. These tiny microbes are making a big difference in our lives in every day. Did you know that they are behind the production of antibiotics? These life-saving medicines destroy harmful microorganisms and slows their growth. And these microorganisms are called pathogens, about which you will study later. And these antibiotics treat diseases like tuberculosis, typhoid and cholera by destroying the microorganisms behind these diseases and slowing their growth inside our body. And that's not all. Microbes are also involved in making vaccines. Vaccines created with the help of microorganisms boost our immunity against specific diseases. We all know what happened with COVID-19 and how quickly we developed a vaccine as a shield against the virus. Right? Yes. Microorganisms even have industrial uses. For example, they are essential component in biogas production. Biogas plants use farm waste, human urine and fecuses and thanks to microorganisms they convert all the waste into biogas for energy and fertilizers for farming. Without these microbes, biogas production wouldn't be possible. And they are also used in tanning leather. So as you can see, these tiny organisms that is invisible to our naked eye are very much involved in our daily lives to make it better in so many ways. Now let's talk about the not so friendly side of microorganisms, our tiny little enemies. One of the biggest problems caused by harmful microorganisms is food spoilage. Ever notice what happens to bread if you leave it for too long? Those pesky microorganisms attack it, starts growing on it and before you know it, it becomes, it becomes unusable. The same thing happens with cheese. Fungus growth on cheese is a real problem. And once the fungi take over, the bread or cheese is no longer safe to eat. Why? 
because these harmful microorganisms can make us seriously sick, causing food poison, stomach pain and even it can cause us real illness. You might have also seen some mold forming on pickles. It's the same culprit attacking your favorite snack or favorite food. And let's not forget meat. Spoiled meat is especially dangerous and it can even be fatal if consumed. So, who was responsible for all this? Yes, it's the harmful microorganisms. You think these microorganisms only attack food? No, they don't just stop there. They attack us humans and animals as well. Such harmful microorganisms are called pathogens and we'll learn more about them in upcoming videos. So we have seen both sides of microorganisms. Some of us are our friends, some of us are our enemies. But here is a fun thought experiment for you. What would happen if all the microorganisms disappear at once? Would humans survive or would life as we know it come to a halt? Think about it and maybe you can drop your answers in the comment section.